What's up internet? A lot of you mentioned in the comments of my input lag videos that if I use a program called DS4 and change the polling rate from 250 to 1000, I can get 1 millisecond of input lag over Bluetooth. Now I'm a little skeptical about that because I mean how can wireless be faster than wired? But we'll give it a shot, we'll pull out my high speed camera and we'll do another input lag test to see if that's true or not. Here's DS4 Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit, Control the Readings. What's really cool about this program is right here it's telling you the input delay. So right now we're ranging between 3.5 to 3.65 it looks like milliseconds. But I don't know if this is accurate or not because on the battery side it's telling me I have 75% for. But my battery is literally just dead and I have to plug it in like two minutes ago. Anyhow, let's go over to other and then we are going to change the Bluetooth pull rate to 1000. So right here it says one millisecond, a thousand hertz. You can see the reading over here. It's alternating between one to two milliseconds of the input delay. Again, I'm skeptical, but if this is true, I don't know what kind of voodoo this is. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and save it to apply it. What do you say we pull out a camera and do some tests? So I've just finished entering all the data for the PS5 wired numbers. And the lowest I got is 38 milliseconds and highest is 63. But for the most part, it stays at the upper 30s and low 40s. See that? And on average, I got about 46.6 milliseconds of input delay. And now let's get into the main event and put in the data for the Bluetooth wireless numbers and see if it really is faster than being wired. Alrighty folks, the data has been inputted for the Bluetooth wireless using the DS4 Windows utility. So the lowest I have is 37.5 milliseconds and the highest is 56. But for the most part, it stays in the mid or low 40s. And in terms of average, I got a 47.6 average. Now how does this compare to the wired results? I got 46.6 for wired and 47.6 for wireless Bluetooth. This is really impressive. So what this means is they're practically the same. Which is amazing how changing the polling rate will reduce your input lag by so much. Honestly, I don't know what kind of voodoo this is. It's crazy. As I was editing the video, I noticed something. I noticed that under the wireless portion of the video, I have made a big boo-boo. So if you look at a picture here on my editor, you can clearly see that there's a wire here. So this is not wireless. This is actually flipped. This is the wire results. So what had happened was I mislabeled the folders. So I labeled this Bluetooth PS5, but from here you can clearly see the wire here. See that? So my bad, getting back to the results, this here should be Bluetooth wireless. And this guy over here is wired. And as you can see, the wireless is slightly faster than the wire one by one millisecond. But with input lag tests like this, you should give a margin of error about 1 to 5 milliseconds. So for all intent and purposes, the results are practically the same. Anyhow, my bad for the boo-boo. So for those who don't know what polling rate means, this means how many times per second. So here it says computer mouse, but you know, substitute that for a controller. Reports is positioned to the system it's connected to. So for example, a report rate 
of 125 Hz means that the mouse reports its position 125 times per second. So we changed it to a thousand times per second, that means the response time is one second. So it makes a lot of sense, right? Previously we were at 250, which it reports the controller position at 4 milliseconds. So we quadrupled that to a thousand hertz. That means we reduce this four times to one millisecond. Now I'm curious if by changing this, you're going to reduce your battery life as well. I'm going to say yes, just because the controller is doing more work. But is it a one to one ratio where you increase the polling rate four times? Do you lose battery life four times as fast? At any rate, this is some great stuff. So the final verdict is, if you're going to use a PS5 DualSense controller, and I think this will work for the PS4 controller as well on your PC, make sure you download the DS for Windows program and use that alongside with your controller. This is crazy, let me tell you, I still cannot believe this. Oh yeah, hopefully you found that interesting and useful. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and have a good one.